Today we're going to be talking about using formal and informal language in writing. So what our objectives are is to differentiate between formal and informal writing so you can tell the difference when you see it and when you're trying to write it and also how to take informal writing and turn it into formal writing. So how would we know which to use? You want to ask yourself who will I be communicating with? Is my audience informal? Will I be talking to friends and family members? Or is my audience considered formal? This would be instructors, academic readers, anything in management. And then, how do I know which to use? It's very similar to the audience, but this has to do with the purpose. So I'm asking myself, what and where will I be communicating? If I'm using um, language to talk to a friend, it's going to be different than the language that I would use to write a college essay. What would be considered an informal purpose is communicating with friends to try and make someone laugh, to, te to send a text. Something that would be more formal is my writing in an essay or if I wanted to make a good impression with someone or to get a job. And you can tell that the purpose can be for writing or for speaking. We're going to get into when you use it for writing, but just to get your mind in the idea of formal versus informal language, think about it also when you're speaking. All right, so let's go over what it means to use formal or informal language in some examples of that. An example of formal language is conventional English. It is considered impersonal, it's objective, it is also reserved, serious, controlled. If you're using informal language, whether it's writing or speaking, slang is perfectly acceptable. You're talking to someone you're familiar with, so it would be personal. It can be subjective or in opinionated. If you're using informal language, it's okay to put your thoughts into it. You're not staying reserved. It can be offhanded or casual. It doesn't sound like you thought it out all the time. Light, casual, or simple are all examples of informal. So how do I know which type of language to use when I'm writing. Since the purpose today is to figure out the difference between formal and informal writing, let's consider when you use which type of writing. If it's an informal situation, it would include journal type writing, text messaging, personal letters. A, an example of formal writing would be a class assignment if you're doing a report or sending a business letter. When you're using formal language, there are certain things to avoid. So we're going to go over those examples, what you want to make sure to avoid when you're in a situation that requires formal language. We're also going to talk about how to move from informal to formal writing. When you're writing in a formal language, you want to avoid generalizations. You want to stick with the specifics. So an example of informal language, which is a generalization, is saying something like, criminals are dangerous. Although it sounds fine to move it into the formal writing, you would say something like, violent criminals can be dangerous because it's more specific. There's many kinds of criminals. We're talking about a more specific area of criminals that can be dangerous. So we need to include the word violent if we're considering writing in a formal situation. Another example of informal generalizations is saying Americans are overweight. Again, to become more formal, you're giving more specifics, you're being more accurate. Two-thirds of Americans are overweight. You can tell this is the type of language that would be used in a research paper or a class essay where your instructor would like you to be more accurate in your writing. Another thing you want to avoid if you're trying to write in a formal way is vague language. 
something that would be considered informal is to say school is a big thing in my life. Consider what a word like big means, or even the word bad. My definition might be very different than yours, so that's considered vague. If I said something like school is an important part of my life, I'm getting my idea across in a more formal way. Another example of vague language used in an informal situation would be they arrested some people at the marsh. Well, what do we know about some people? It's not clear. If I said or wrote, they arrested some protesters at the march, I would be writing in a more formal way. Another example, as I said before, using the word bad, drinking while driving is bad. That is a word that has many different meanings for different people. I want to be more specific. Drinking while driving is dangerous is considered a much more formal way to express that idea. Another thing you want to avoid when you're writing in a formal way is using pronouns such as you and I. By nature, using you or I indicates informality and it usually is an easy fix to get rid of these words in your writing to move them into a formal situation. Informal example, when you work with a patient who is very ill, you need to be patient. That's becoming conversational, which is a, a, a very strong sign of informal writing or even speaking. The more formal version would be when nurses work with a patient who is very ill, they need to be patient. It's just being more formal. It's not talking to someone using you or I. Again, the type of language that you want to avoid when using formal language is something that is more of an expression. These informal words are more conversational words that you would use when you're talking to a friend. You, may, you might say something like, my aunt has a lot of kids. Very conversational. It doesn't seem like anything is wrong with it, but when you're asked to write something in a class essay or in a letter or something where you're trying to come across as a more formal situation, you would say, my aunt has many children. Another example is using the word messed up. Almost slang, definitely conversational. The criminal justice system is messed up. A more specific way to word that would be to say the criminal justice system has serious problems. Again, it's not an expression like messed up. It's more specific. It gets the idea across. It's just more formal. An easy thing to avoid when writing in a formal situation is, the, is do not use contractions. This is a very easy fix. You just want to go through your writing before you turn it in and make sure that you change any contractions into their original two words and then you will be switching from what is considered informal to formal writing. For example, many patients don't listen to their doctors. Just simply change it to many patients do not listen to their doctors. It's just a matter of going through and carefully rereading your work before you turn it in. In all language, you should avoid, avoid fragments, but in formal language, it's an especially important thing to avoid. What's a fragment? If you don't have a subject, a verb, and a complete thought, you're looking at something that's considered a fragment. I can't just simply say this part of a sentence and have you understand what I mean. It's missing something. For example, because it is near my home. That doesn't convey everything I need to know for it to be a complete sentence, so it's considered a fragment. You want to avoid fragments in all writing, but especially in anything considered formal. Rather than saying, I chose to attend COD period because it is near my house, what it should say is, I chose to attend COD because it is near my house. That includes a subject, a verb, and a complete thought, rather than splitting up 
your sentence with a period after the word COD and causing a fragment after it. Also to avoid when writing formally is two word verbs. When one verb can be used, don't go with two verbs unless for some reason you are trying to write informally. For example, if you put looked and up next to each other, you're causing a situation where it's informal writing. I looked up information about nursing positions. What could I use to replace looked up? I could use the verb researched. I researched information about nursing positions. That is considered formal writing. So be aware of using two word verbs when one verb will work. Other pitfalls, just things to be aware of that are a red flag for informal writing. You don't want to have any exclamation marks. You don't want to include needless words like well and you know, which are considered very conversational and also really shouldn't be part of speaking. Don't use too many short, choppy sentences that could easily be combined to make more complex sentences. This is a sign of someone who's writing in an informal manner. Shorten expressions like phone and use the full word, which is telephone. We want to stay away from acronyms, and also we don't want to use absolute terms. It's very hard for something to always or never be true. Those are signs of being informal in your writing. Some words are easily identified as informal. These, this is a list of what we would consider very informal words. I don't think I necessarily need to go through all of them. I think they're pretty familiar to anyone. If you take a look at them, you use them normally in an informal situation. Just make sure they're not making their way into your writing. Again, get what you want down on paper and just like the contractions, when you're going through your work, when you consider it to be done, make sure that you're avoiding words like a lot or ain't uh, anyways. This is the continuation of the list. We never really want to use words like kind of and sort of in our speaking language, but they slip in in a conversational situation, but you never want to let those get through onto your formal writing. And there's a lot of these type of words. So we talked about what to avoid when writing formally. Let's think about what should be included in formal writing. You want to use polysyllabic words, bigger words, words that sound a little bit more important. When you're writing, you want to make sure that you're having complex, complete sentences. You want to say what you mean in each sentence and make sure that it's clear. You also want to always avoid using slang vocabulary, which we talked about. Part of writing formally includes remaining impersonal. You don't want to picture the person speaking to you. You want it to have a sense of authority. And also formal writing prefers learned words, something that you probably picked up through reading or through your education. Maybe not the most common words, but words that are specific and actually express what you mean that are some of the more common slang words. Now let's move into the other purpose of this information session, which is to be able to transform informal writing into formal writing. So you'll need to be able to identify different types of informal language in a sample paragraph if you're going to be able to look through your own writing and switch anything that had informal language into formal language. All right, as an example, is this considered formal or informal writing? After reading The Red Badge of Courage, it is easy for you to see Crane's purpose in telling the story. Formal or informal? This is actually considered formal writing. 
It's very clear. There's no slang. There's no contractions. It's using the word purpose in telling the story so I know exactly what they're asking me. So this is a quick example of formal writing. Let's go on. Formal or informal, Native American literature is rich in cultural information and poetic language. Again, this is considered formal. Ask yourself why. Look back over the information. Is it specific? Do I understand exactly what they're talking about? It's not vague, is it? Someone is asking me, is it rich in cultural information and poetic language? What kind of information? Cultural. What type of language? Poetic. This is very specific, formal language. Let's go with this sentence. Native American literature isn't rich in Puritan characteristics. Obviously, the contraction gives it away as being informal, but it's also a bit vague. Moving on, formal or informal, everybody knows that Snickers is the best candy bar. This is clearly informal, but ask yourself why. First of all, who is everybody? That's a vague word. And what is the best? It's very conversational and it's vague because my idea of best could be different than your idea. Using the word everybody isn't specific and also I just know it can't be true. So those are easy to identify informal words. Formal or informal, the field trip participants will meet at the A-Town Walmart. Using a word like participants indicates a more formal sentence. Even though this is very short, it is considered a formal sentence. Thank you for attending this information session. For more information on informal and formal language, to practice it, to look for it in your own writing, please come to the Learning Commons and the Reading, Writing, Speech Assistance area for information on formal and informal or anything else that you might need help with. Thank you.